everyone, Melanie Minchinger here, illustrator for Gina K Designs. Today I have a new project for you with my newest set from Gina K Designs, This Girl Is. And I'm going to be showing you how you can make this image or any other line art image into a silhouette to build scenes. And I'm also going to be using it with the beautiful new tropical tiding set from my friend and fellow illustrator, Teresa Momber. So I'll show you how to build this up with the sponging. Then we'll go in and add some of the landscape elements to finish out that scene. There's a couple different ways though that you can do your silhouette. So here I just stamped it and then colored it in with a Sharpie or you can use another alcohol marker. Just all of my black ones are kind of drying up a little bit, looking streaky. So I used a Sharpie there. But I'm gonna show you how you can do a paper cutting technique and that is gonna be really solid and it's gonna add a lot of interest and dimension to your card. The products that you're going to need in addition to these two stamp sets, the cardstock that I'm using today, I've got the Gina K Pure Luxury. You can use the layering weight or the heavy base white for your scene. So this is three and seven eighths inches by five and an eighths inches. And then on this one, I just use an A2 size white base and it really pops with that edge, but I decided to go ahead and just grab a colored base. So I'm using the Wisteria. Then if you're going to be cutting it out, you're just going to need a piece of black cardstock. So this is the Pure Luxury Black Onyx. It just needs to be large enough for that image that you're going to be stamping on. So a larger piece if you're doing the larger girl, smaller piece if you're doing the smaller one. The ink pads that I'm using for this scene, I've got the Gina K Designs Jet Black Amalgam Ink. I'm going to be using the Tangerine Twist, which is one of the new 2018 colors the Wild Dandelion, and then that Wild Wisteria to match the cardstock. And then for this paper cutting technique, we're going to be using some of the Gina K Designs white premium pigment ink so that we can see that outline when we're doing our cutting. Then just some little scissors. You can use a Misty for doing your stamping or just have a few acrylic blocks handy. Using some different sponge daubers here. I like to use three different ones for those three different colors. You can wash these, but I usually just kind of keep to the color group. So I use this one for blue or purple. This one looks like it's stained, but I got it cleaned. I just washed it with a little soap and water and let it dry before starting the video. Then just a few markers that I have here for doing some texture and shine for those waves. I've got the IG5 and the IG7. So just some deep grays if you don't have these and then just a white gel pen. And finally, just a little bit of adhesive if you wanna use the connect glue or if you wanna have some adhesive foam squares for popping up your layer and that silhouette. Watch to the end, cause I'm gonna show you some different ways that you can customize this girl. So let's begin by getting our scene stamped. One other thing I forgot to say, just have some masking paper or some copy paper for doing that horizon. Okay, so we've got our colored ink pads here. I like to do my black images last so that they're really, really crisp and dark so they don't get smudged and so they don't get any other uh, colors of ink over them. So we're just gonna do the color first. So I'm gonna put this here so that you can see where we're going. A lot of times when I want to put a sun or a moon in the sky, I will use a punch or a die cut circle to create and then mask in that circle or round image. But today I'm just going to be using the sponge dauber. My inspiration for this set was I just googled sunset images and that brought up a lot of really nice both paintings and photographs that gave me an idea for what color choices I wanted to use. I just wanted to do something a little different than I had done before. So I decided today that I would use one of my sponge daubers for creating this sun. So you're just going to mash it down onto your pad really hard and then you're going to put it about a third of the way up. Now it doesn't have to be centered. You can have it over a little bit, but I was just thinking of where the hands would hit and that's going to get filled in there. So I just got a little bit of ink on there with my finger, but I'm going to be sponging over that. I could also just flip it over either. Way. Nope. Yep, it's got ink on that side too. So this is the one we're going to use. Okay. So I'm going to just smash that just right on there for my son. And then without re-inking, I'm going to put it down here and that's going to be that mirror image. Okay. Now I'm just going to lightly sponge around both areas so that I've got some of that yellow and we can go back and forth 
with our ink if we want to add more. So you can always build it up. You want to go light except for when you're really trying to create that intentional circle there. Now I'm going to grab the jobber that I'm using for the orange. I'm going to cap this up right now. And I'm going to go on and do some of this tangerine. And if you want, you can take your copy paper and get some of that ink off of there so that you really know how loaded up it is. And then I'm just going to go around the sun first at the top. So we're always making the sky darker. And then whatever you're doing above, you're going to do below, but this is going to be lighter. So I'm just swirling this around. I'm not pouncing it because I don't want to have the shape of that sponge on there. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on and I want to make that horizon line there. So I'm going to make this a little bit darker by putting on some of the tangerine twist. Whoop. And let me just hold that down a little bit better. Or you could use some masking tape or post-it notes. I think I used post-it note notes on the first one. It keeps moving on me. I'm sorry. Okay. So just hold it down firmly. Okay, and then we'll pick that up. And now I'm gonna go down and I am going to cover up the sky and I'm gonna add some of the wisteria for the water. So I'm gonna do that just at that top line, that edge and then I'm going to go around towards the bottom and then we'll finish up the top of the sky. So swirl that on, swirl, get it covered up right at that horizon line. And I'm just going to swirl this on so that I've got some definition there for the water. Pick that up and then I'm going to go down near the bottom and I'm going to repeat this at the top. You can turn the paper. It makes it a little bit easier for me to work towards myself and keep my hand on the right instead of trying to move up on the left. Make sure you put your masking paper back down if you end up going up towards that edge because you really want that line to be sharp. And now we're going to do some up at the top. Just swirl this in. So it doesn't seem like these colors would work maybe at first glance, but once you start looking at photos online, I'm telling you, you'll see, you'll notice a lot more colors that you, than you might remember when you look at sunsets. So that's why I try not to just go by what I remember, but by looking at photos. Okay, and then you can have some blotches going through like for clouds if you want, but I don't want it to get too muddy. I'm just putting in just a little bit of haze here. All right, now let's go ahead and I'm just going to keep this just like this for right now. I'm going to add the birds and everything later. So I'm going to set this aside for a second. So let's make our girl. So what we're going to do is I'm going to stamp out, because I used the smaller one on this one, I'm going to use the larger one. And you can lay it out and see exactly how it's going to look, right about there. I hope that you saw the beautiful card that Donna Idlet made for our blog hop, where she was standing in the water. It was so inspiring to me. All right, so I'm going to use this white ink. And you can emboss this as well as if you want, or you could use a Versamark, but the white is just really going to stand out and make it easy for me to see my cutting. Now, if you end up smudging it or going inside or outside of the lines a little bit, that's okay because we're going to be flipping this over. So I'm going to grab my scissors and you can cut this at the bottom shorter or longer if you want, depending on where you want it. So I'm just going to cut just very loosely around her hair and you can go back and 
add more little curls and waves to that if you want. And then around her sleeve, let me just cut off this side part here. And when we pop this up, it's going to look like she's staying in the foreground and you've got that sunset in the distance. Now, I mentioned watching to the end to see some different looks. So since you're cutting, you can give her a different hairstyle. So what I did, I was thinking of a friend who I've known for years and years and years. We go way back to the Dirty Dozen and my early stamping days, Carrie Lee Sarika. And she has been on my mind and in my thoughts and prayers lately. Her 14-year-old son has cancer. So she's a very talented crafter. She's a wonderful person. So if you could say a prayer for her, go look her up. Any kind of encouragement she and her family could get would be awesome. And so I was thinking about her when I was making this card and when I was doing some cutting because she really rocks the short hair. So I'm going to show you one with my smaller girl that is trimmed down to have short hair. And that's the card that I'm going to be sending to her. So just cut carefully around the hands, and then like that, and then that is just going to get popped up. Now I ended up getting, I've got my sand eraser here, I ended up getting just a little bit of embossing powder from another project on the back, if you see some little white dots here. So I'm just going to rub those off with my sand eraser. This is so handy, not just for rubbing off ink, but for getting light things off of dark cardstock too. All right, so this could go just right there and then you could have your greeting at the top. So let me show you my other two girls that I have. So this is the same one that I did earlier but that I already put the foam on. So you see it's going to be the reverse side. So plan that when you're thinking about your images and your greeting. So here is the full length girl and I made her dress a little bit longer and as you can see, I gave her a trim so she has short hair. So I could just put that just right in the middle of this card or off to the side and put my greeting wherever I wanted it. But let's go ahead and add some of Teresa's images here from Tropical Tidings. So we've got some different trees that you can put in the water. We've got those reeds and the grass. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to do... So you can position this on here, but it's okay if she covers up some of it. You don't want to make it look like all these images are separate. You can have it overlap in that scene. Okay, so I'm going to have this one set of trees over on this side. And she's created a little reflection, so they don't need to be right at the top of that horizon line. They're coming out of the water. And then I'm going to do the other one opposite side and again these can go off the card you don't necessarily have to have the whole image in there so it's going to look different every time you stamp it on your scenes depending on where you position them high or low having just little parts and then if you're trying to make a long scene varying the height so that it looks like different images so I'm going to put it just right about over here Put that one up a little bit higher. You just want to make sure that you have room for your greeting. So on this one, I'm going to have sending healing hugs. On the other one, I had her enjoy the simple things. But you have a lot of words in the This Girl Is set that you could use. Right there. Put it right up here. And then I'm just going to add my little birds in. So sending healing hugs. And then I'm going to put just some of the small grass down at the bottom, just surrounding her. So again, I'm going to vary the height, kind of have them overlapping. And I can stamp some off too, just to add a little bit. You can also put just, there's a tiny one, I'm going to put this, I've got this inked up, but I'm going to have it, I want some stamped off, 
You don't want to do one that you've stamped off part of the edge and then put it on there because then you're going to have part of it be full strength ink and part of it be the lighter. So make sure you stamp it off onto the scratch paper. Then I'm going to use just a little, a little clump here just to put out in the edge just for a little more variety in the scene. Okay. <clears throat> and then the last thing that I want to do is I'm going to add just a few of those birds. So again, I'll put this girl on here and I think I'm going to put a little bird right about there. Make sure I'm putting it the right way. Okay. So one like that. I kind of like the symbolism of having a couple since I'm thinking about the two of them, the whole family, but I just can't imagine. My son has never really been seriously ill, but they are a faithful family and they're getting through it. And it's such an inspiration to me. And I put a little bit over here as well. So right over here. Maybe some up here. And it's done whenever you think it's done. It's so fun to just keep going and keep building these scenes. Okay, the last thing that I want to do is I just want to add some ripples on the water. So we want to add that before we put the girl down. And I'm just going to do this really quickly, but you can add more dimension if you want. So I'm going to do the lighter one first. And I just want to make just little tiny ripples going across. I'm going to put just a little bit around the trees, even though she's got those little contour lines for the ripples, to just kind of show us where those waves need to go. I have it skip a little bit. And then we're going to put a highlight on the top. You don't want them all to line up. You want them to be somewhat parallel, not too straight, just kind of wavy. And then I'm going to put just the white gel pen at the top of these. So just little skips where it's making little ripples on the water. My pen is starting to skip because it's running out of the white ink. So I need to order another one. And I already want to re-ink my Jet Black Amalgam pad because I've been using it so much and I just want it to be nice and dark and juicy, juicy as possible. It doesn't really matter as much in this area where it's covered up. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put her right about, right about there so you can see a little bit of the sun. So I've trimmed down those foam squares, just large and small ones, but it's nice to be able to customize them, especially for a really skinny area like here on the arm. And if you're worried about somebody seeing that foam on the side, what you can do is you can actually color this with your Sharpie. And that'll cut down on seeing that black inside. One of the reasons my alcohol markers, my black is drying up is because I really like to use it for correcting little nicks on furniture and shoes and things like that. Black, of course, but alcohol markers are extremely handy. They have a lot of uses. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put this down. I have this one last little piece of paper, and then we're going to attach it to that base. And then I pulled aside one of those really pretty tangerine twist envelopes for this. Okay, so I'm just going to do a little bit of glue here, back, but I love these two sets together. You could also use This Girl Is and do the same kind of technique with some of Teresa's other framescapes, and again, it's going to be a smaller scene, but you just have to imagine that the girl is in the foreground, the larger she is. And again, I'm going to show you just really quickly just stamping this smaller girl. If you want to see, just some tips for getting this colored in if you're going to go the coloring route. So I'm using the Jet Black Amalgam. 
And you could also use the sweet corn if you wanted to do that so you're not having to worry as much about covering up those lines. Okay, so I'm just going to fill this in with the Sharpie and I just want to make sure that I am coloring in the direction that things go. So for instance, I'm going to fill in her hands and her sleeve. But then what I want to do is I want to make sure that that hair that I'm doing looks like it's going across her arm. And then I'm coloring the direction of the folds of her dress so that those will all blend in. So this is all going to be straight right here. Cover it up with the hair. Have that be the last thing if it leaves any streaks. And then just carefully fill in her skirt. And this can be stamped directly onto your scene. Just what I did on that original card. So I hope you enjoyed this video and this gives you lots of ideas for the This Girl Is when you are building set scenes and as well as for this Tropical Tidings. But I love when our stamps work well together this way. Please visit my blog, Hands, Head, and Heart, for more ideas and inspiration using all of our stamp sets and at GDK Designs and Stamp TV. Thank you so much for watching today. God bless.